people that there is a, a boat out on the water. You can't really see, but you can probably hear it. The ASMR. Pacific Ocean. <sighs> see my breath. Anyway, uh, let me turn it around. Ah, maybe I can aim it right this time. Like, like that? Can you see me? I hope so. Uh, yeah, so I found a nice spot here before that river, Salette's River. And it's actually just past another river called the Dee River. Apparently, it's the shortest river in the world, according to signage. <laughs> but uh, I think I might just go back here find a level spot in the sand and crash. Uh, it's supposed to drizzle until about 6 in the morning, but it hasn't started yet, so maybe we'll get lucky. But uh, I'm done for now. I did probably about 3 or 4 miles, and I'm good with that. Uh, I got a break into it. I might ditch my fleece vest. One, because it's camo. <laughs> and I was just saying how too much camo is not good. But also because uh, I don't really need it. It's, I mean, it gets a little colder than this here, but I have that down puffy, and that's more than enough to keep me warm. So it's kind of just uh, extra in my pack, extra weight, extra bulk. So I might ditch that too. I think I'll wait a day or two before I finally actually ditch it. But that's what's on my mind right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna set up and uh, flip you back around. Kind of see. Lincoln City is weird. It's split into two, two kind of sections. There's like, I guess it's like a business section and a residential sec section. And the residential is more south. But uh, anyway, come some people. <laughs> so yeah, I mean this is right off the road, so there's a lot of people that will probably come here. But no one's gonna bother me. <laughs> and if they do, whatever. Also. Oh god, it's so bright. <laughs> Alright, as you can see, I'm under my tarp and I got this bright light in my eyes, guys. So I don't even know if you can see me. Hold on. Hold on. Alright, my peoples. I, uh, I ended up moving on from that, uh, from the beach, but uh, I've moved to that patch of woods. But uh, I don't even know what it looks like. But I found a spot on the side of the road. I'm going to catch some Z's. It's almost 2 in the morning. And uh, I'll get up and start hiking again. But uh, I should be about a mile away from that bridge in the Siletz River. So uh, check you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Morning, my peoples. It's about 7:30, and uh, 7:30 in the morning that is. <laughs> so I just woke up. Uh, the Gore-Tex bivy did its job, and the tarp combination. Uh, the tarp is a little short, and I'm gonna have to acquire two tent stakes, I believe. So the plan is to uh, stake down the foot end of the tarp that way it stays in place and the wind won't blow it away because I thought I could just like kind of tuck it tuck it under my sides or whatever and uh, it worked but it was like uh, a strong gust could definitely blow it away from me while in my sleep and then I'd be you know I still had the Gore-Tex bivy but I'd rather have the double protection so Another thing is, is uh, I lay down on my bag and used my bag as a pillow with whatever clothes I wasn't wearing and all that, my food bag. And uh, I put pressure on the peanut butter jar and all the water that was inside of there leaked out. So luckily I didn't make coffee. I didn't make it into coffee yet, so I didn't waste coffee. Precious, precious coffee. <laughs> but, uh, so that's just something I gotta keep in mind for the future. But uh, I'm gonna walk and find a water source, I guess. I still have a little over a liter, which is usually what most hikers carry on them at all times anyway. 
but I like to carry a little extra because uh, I get real thirsty real quick. And when I run out of water, it's just it's not a good feeling to run out of water. And, uh, in the past, I've ran out of water uh, in the middle of the Shenandoah Mountains in Virginia. And uh, it was a pretty, it was a pretty horrible time. It was the middle of the summer, and I had only brought two liters of capacity with me, and I blew through that going up the mountains. And I found myself with my friend on a ridge line that had no water on it. So we had to leave our packs on the ridge line and take our little day packs. Ooh, little salamander. Check this little guy out. He's not the bright orange ones you see. Oh my, please, it's real. Oh. All right, I'll leave you alone, buddy. Uh, I think he was a bit camera shy. <laughs> anyway, he didn't like the light on my flash. So yeah, in the Shenandoahs, I uh, ran out of water and my friend and I had to hike. Like, it was desperate for me. Like, I fell asleep. I was so tired and dehydrated. And when I woke up, I woke up with a headache. And, oh, geez, I'm probably covering the microphone. Anyway, I hope that got the audio came in because I'm not repeating it. <laughs> So uh, stuck on a ridge line with no water, I had to hike with my friend back down the mountain, probably about three or four miles each way until we found a water source and we had to, we left our packs up there so that it wasn't as ba bad of a hike. Excuse me. But uh, well, in any case, you can imagine, it was like a death march on the way there and we cameled up as much as we could and we found a way to carry some extra water, but. That was one mistake I don't plan on ever making again because dehydration is not fun. Uh, yeah, we'll see what the day brings today. I'm gonna hike on. All right, this is the balcony I was saying. I've heard of Joe the sea lion. What the hell? Hold on. What? 1925, Charles Nelson and W.D. Joe Scott purchased 170 acres that was the Nelscott for $4,000. Yo. Even with inflation, that's like a ridiculous price. So anyway, hold on. Uh, let me frame it up for you guys. I've heard of this Joe the Sea Lion. This sounds very familiar. It was like some gimmick they did. Crawled onto porches, loved his back. So they <laughs> they held this poor sea lion in captivity. And he became the mascot for this acreage that they bought in this area. But that Joe the sea lion, I, I think I've heard of that in the past, but hey, whatever. Anyway, it's time to stop. I don't know if I'm gonna do breakfast. I might eat breakfast just to get the weight out of my pack. Just do some oatmeal or something. But uh, it's not so much the oatmeal that weighs a lot, it's the mixed nuts and dried fruit that I have to go with the oatmeal. So I'm going to load up on that and have my morning coffee and, yeah, we'll check in. Well, here's the pack. It's holding up. And I'd be like, oh, you got such a big pack, but, I mean, really, that's where it ends. <laughs> you know, the stuff inside of it. So it just looks like I have a lot more than I do. But I'm always glad to have the extra space in my pack. I'd always rather have a pack that's a little too big. And a lot of people, a lot of hikers would disagree with me, but I'd rather have a pack that's a little too big and have extra space than a pack that's just big enough or even too small and have no extra space, if any. I mean, I've, it's come in handy for me a bunch of times. There's been times when I ran into somebody that needed help carrying something or you know, like the, an extra sleeping bag for them or something, or I had to go grab something for somebody, or it just comes in handy in a lot of different situations. But anyway, time for coffee. Yeah, coffee. All right, so if you're wondering what's going on here, I'm uh, under my poncho, because it started raining. But uh, I was thinking about that sign, <laughs> and uh, it's just crazy how, 
you know, the land was carved up. Well, first of all, it was stolen, <laughs> right, from the natives. Then it was carved up and sold for real cheap to select few people. Who knows why they were chosen to get such a good deal. And then, you know, they turned it into real estate and all that and made even more money. So that's why real estate's so high right now because there was an original buyer and, you know, you're trying to make money on it every time you sell it, so. <laughs> but eventually it gets astronomical. And, but anyway, that's uh, just a crazy thought that, it's, it's always been weird to me, the concept of, you know, land that was just taken and then the way it was carved up and stuff, it, it just, I don't know, in my head, it doesn't really make sense, even though, you know, it's been working up until now, <laughs> and, you know, it's still hanging on by the skin of its teeth, but it's not really sustainable anymore, and I've talked about that in the past. So I'm gonna, you know, come out of my little turtle shell here and start hiking. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cross that river. It's only about a half mile away, and then, about five miles after that is another kind of restroom, public beach park area. So I'll be stopping there and uh, reevaluating. So let's go. So the 101 is right here, and there's a little trail. So I followed it, and it goes basically. And keep in mind, the cameras never do this justice. But this is basically a little ledge, and then there's a ledge here, and then there's a cliff, and the surf is just pounding right there. And unfortunately, it's not a clear day, or you'd be able to see it, but the surf is really high. Like, there's nice little tunnels forming, and I just looked on the weather app when I was sitting earlier having my coffee, and uh, it said that uh, there was like a gale warning or something like that. So that means high surf and a high surf warning. So it's a good day if you're a surfer. But I noticed this too, this old, real old sign. And I just think it's funny. It's just like a little scrap of land. I don't even know if you could put a building here. I guess you could if you built stilts and stuff. But one day this is gonna slide down into the ocean anyway. Why would you even try to sell it? Well, I guess that's why it's still for sale. <laughs> but 0.44 acres that will one day slide into the ocean could be yours for hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> Anyway, continuing on the bridge is right up right around the curve here. So and then I'm headed to The restroom it's about by about four and a half miles away at this point Well, I guess if they put this building here <laughs> They could put another one there, I guess. It's probably more land down there than it looks like, but you can kind of see the surf breaking over there. Way back here, there's a nice break. A little bit of, not enough of the tunnel to ride in, but, I mean, the waves aren't like this on the East Coast. On the East Coast, the waves break like right at the shore. So it doesn't make for great surfing. Even the best surfing spots in New Jersey, anyway, <laughs> are really not great at all. But, hey. I'm gonna continue on here. Keep on walking. I'm gonna start shooting a little less and start pumping uh, this pack a little more. I just got rid of, I had two, one and not even one, it was two one liter bottles, a little over a liter, 1.25. And uh, I realized I'm only going five miles. <laughs> I don't even need that whole liter. Plus I have about half of my coffee left, a little less than half my coffee. So I'm like, why am I carrying all this water? So I dumped one of the bottles out. And uh, I'm gonna have to start thinking about that more because that, I mean, the pack feels a lot better with that water gone. And like I said, I have too much food. I have like three or four days worth of food. And that's only because I went to Walmart before I left and I was, I don't know, went on a, sh a hiker food shopping spree. Shoot, I hope I'm pointing the camera. Uh, it might be in my chest again. There's some other, well, there's going to be a lot of nice views. Hopefully it clears up. But I think it's going to be socked in all day. So there's a beach over here. 
Well, you can't see it. Anyway, cameras don't do. You guys just got to get out here if you want to see all these beautiful spots because to see it for yourself is different. But, all right, time to hike. Get serious. I could take those buses, <laughs> but I'm walking. Okay. Trying not to put cursing on my channel as much, but that is one disgruntled sanitary worker or whatever. Probably a city worker. Or maybe just somebody playing. I don't know. Anyway. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. There we go. <laughs> I'm uh, loving the public restroom situation for sure. <laughs> Can't complain. It's a nice spot. This is actually just before the bridge. I thought it was before the bridge earlier. But just a nice view over there. I think that's three rocks or something. I don't know. I forget what they call it. Check out all this driftwood. Just it's moving with the tides. Why would you do that? Ding, dang, cell phone cameras. Sorry, guys. I thought maybe it was just my last phone that did that, but it would do that a lot. <laughs> Look at this here. Look at that thing move. Try to steady it. Big hunking pieces of wood. I don't know where it all comes from. <laughs> I mean, there's wood strewn all over this little bay. Outlet, I guess. Is it an outlet? Oh yeah, this is the Celeste River, so this is where the Celeste River goes into the ocean. Anyway, okay, focus is going crazy. Gotta love it. Oh my god, with the focus, why? I don't understand this camera. All right. So just seeing these formations here reminded me, I want to bring up, uh, just wondering if anybody's heard of it, these theories that the land is actually petrified, old animals, like the great giant animals of old. And uh, there are some formations out there, like mountains that look like big dinosaurs or lizards and weird things. Anyway, I don't quite believe it, but it, this just reminded me of that. One of the many conspiracy theories online, because it kind of like, it was like, oh, maybe it's a spine of like, a big old dragon. Oh, that's a cool little like bonsai looking tree up there. I think we found our culprit. A nasty sanitation worker or city worker leaving the site. I wonder if this is actually him. That would be funny. I don't want to hear me. Oh, he saw me. Apparently, this is Schooner Creek, not the Celeste River. Eh, what do I know? I'm just gonna stop guessing. <laughs> but I think the Celeste River is just down the way or something. Anyway, it's great that they closed the sidewalk now. I have to cross the road. They provided no place for the pedestrians to cross. So now I kind of just gotta wait till it's clear and make a run for it. Wish me luck. Go, 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 go. <laughs> All right. There was just a big like wave that came in and all these logs were going crazy. But. Am I crazy or who else wants to jump in there and hop on one of those things and ride it? I would totally do that if we're a little warmer out. But look how like the water is all muddied and silted from where it meets the land. It's pretty crazy. I know I said I'd hike more and film less, but eh, whatever. 
really I want to film a lot because I want to uh, test, see how much capacity this phone really has for storage. But really it has a whole lot more than my old phone did. But, uh, I think that's cool how it just... Semi truck to ship the whole bridge. All right, so I just came across this sign it's just after that bridge. The bridge is right there. But uh, let's see. Uh, I had a point to make. Oh, so there was an earthquake back in 1700, apparently. Yeah, 1700. January 26, 1700. There was a nine. Uh, Richter scale 9.0 earthquake that happened and it says here that the ocean floor from Northern California all the way up to British Columbia you know Canada rose 20 feet in this one event and caused the wave to 30 40 feet high to come to shore here but not only that I mean, 20 feet, that's pretty significant. So it probably raised the whole of this land, you know, inward. And uh, online, you can see there's old, old maps of the West Coast. California is actually like a strip, an island that isn't attached to the continental United States at all. So, let me turn me around. This is my theory. No. But yeah, I think, I mean, it would make sense that maybe that's the event because around, you know, in the 1800s, 1900s, early 1900s, uh, the maps that we see before then, and probably around the 1400s is the earliest we have maps, but they portray California as being an island. So I think that the whole valley where I just came from, Salem, Eugene, Portland, you know, that was the, the bed of the isthmus between that island and the continent of the United States. But, just a theory, but I guess I'll let you guys in on what I'm thinking about, because there's a lot of little signs like that, because, you know, it's a very touristy area. And I just passed another one over there. I'm not gonna go back, <laughs> but uh, I was talking about the na the natives in the area and how uh, Howard Taft was, uh, was it Taft? Uh, it doesn't matter, but anyway. <laughs> Oh, Talbot, a man named Talbot. He was commissioned to come here and there was only like 85 natives left because of disease and stuff. This is the Spaniards. Just wanted to add, I gotta use the back facing camera from now on. Uh, <laughs> somebody pulled up as I was uh, trying to make a point about the Native Americans. But like everything, all of these little signs for tourists, they just like remind us of how you know, like you call yourself patriots, you don't know patriot, you're a rapist. This land was stolen, raped, murdered, and you know, we're all guilty of it. I mean, unless you're a native. <laughs> and I mean, myself too, I mean, I'm, my family comes from Portugal and Spain mostly. And we were the first, <laughs> we were one of the first people to come, at least to the Caribbean, you know, and, the Americas and start this horrible thing that happened here but I don't know <laughs> kind of losing my point of thought again uh, the train of thought again but it's just like I think we all have to take a step back and realize how we got here where we're at today and stop worrying about you know this is mine or this is our country this is my country I mean it's important like you know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, there's a word I'm looking for. Whatever. Uh, to have pride in your nation, whatever. There's a word I'm looking for, but nationalism or... It doesn't matter. There's a word for it. But, <laughs> you know, we should just take a step back from that. I mean, and like most of the signs that I've read in these touristy areas, they always relate back to 
antiquity and it's like we make it seem like oh this great thing that our our patriot founding fathers did by exploring this land and founding it and discovering it and how it says how the u.s government on that last sign you know they commissioned people like that talbot guy or like lewis and clark to come out here and see it wasn't just to explore the land and see what a great land it was. They were really just trying to see how can they exploit that land. And that's what's been happening all this time. There's one other thing I want to add uh, before I forget. And I swear that's it after this. I'm not going to go into any more rants. Or at least, you know, this one's really important. But, uh, yeah, I was saying we're all guilty of it. My own family, your family, everybody. I mean, even if you're black in this country, then it's still, you know, you still had your hand. Like, maybe you were brought as slaves, but afterwards, you still had your part in, in doing what happened here. <laughs> and, you know, the eradication of a race of people, basically. And the taking over of their land instead of working with them. But anyway, the point is, that's why we need God's forgiveness, because, I mean, that's part of the original sin, like, we, we messed up, <laughs> and, but that's okay, like, we're, we can start again at square one, you know, it's not, but all this division happening now between races and stuff, it's, it seems further off than it was, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is not about taking sides one way or the other or anything political, it's just, I mean, it's just a fact that, you know, the reason why we're here is because the land was taken and exploited. So, anyway, that's why we need, you know, God to save us from our mistakes. That's my point. <laughs> so you might recognize this spot from a previous video. That's because there's a bus stop right here. I'm actually going to go into there and take a little sit down break finish my coffee and then I'll start cold soaking my oats so I can have some breakfast and I'm not really even that hungry but I want to get some weight out of this pack and you know I don't want to starve myself either I mean I had a, a light lunch and a light dinner yesterday and I've been keeping up with you know not overeating as much slipped up a couple times not gonna lie you know, especially uh, when I would go to that church and there'd be all kinds of food available. Sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> My bad. Anyway. So, yeah, break time. I have to admit, it is quite mesmerizing just sitting here looking at these. But I wasn't going to shoot them because I've shot them in the past from the bus window. But if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I forget which one it was, but it's in there. Uh, I'm gonna let my phone charge, take a little break for a little longer, and be on my way. All right, so I walked a little further and then I came across this little path leading to a section of woods here. Let me back up so I can... So there's two little making sure I get in a shot. There's two concrete blocks here. So I'm assuming that's uh, some sort of lighthouse or something, I don't know. Structure, structure of old. <laughs> but uh, so I'm coming around here and I'm looking at all the garbage that was left because just like everywhere else, there's all kinds of stuff. And uh, I run into this guy, <laughs> which I think the eyes are wrong on this kind of spooky <laughs> but so when I found it when I saw it I'm like oh I found him uh, finding Nemo anyway so I'm tempted what is that on my face tempted to uh, take him as a mascot but he's too creepy he's probably got bad mojo <sighs> I'm watching you. It's crazy. So I'm gonna leave him here somewhere like visible. <laughs> and I'm not gonna take it with me. But yeah, 
continue on. I'm really dilly-dallying at this point, but, you know, I'm giving my feet a chance to toughen up. I'm probably going to stop at that restroom at, like, the... Probably make about six miles for the day, maybe seven. And uh, I'll probably continue on after, but I'm going to stop there for a good long time and rest and uh, just hang out on the beach because it's not raining now. And it's not supposed to rain all night, but it might start again. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how far I make it. <laughs> so, as you can see, made it back to the beachfront. And I'm at that park that has the restrooms. The restrooms are that away. But I just needed to sit here. And I am, I'm not focused. I mean, I am really struck by how big these waves are. It's hard to tell on the video. But these are like legit, you know, tunnels going on. You know, not as big as what you see in the competitions in Hawaii, but almost. They're pretty dang big. And even locals are coming up and taking video and pictures of them, so I guess it's not all that normal. But uh, I'm gonna rest here for a bit. Got some picnic tables. I'm on the other one. I got my shoes off. Got my tootsies drying in the breeze. It's a little chilly, but it's really, it's a little, so much warmer. And the coast has a smell too to it that, I don't know, it just reminded me <laughs> walking around today that uh, I don't smell that in the valley. It's, I guess it's the ocean air, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, happy as can be right now. But uh, I'm gonna find a way to get down to the beach. You can get down over over yonder there, but there's some barricades. It says no beach access, but might be able to go down there anyway. Cause uh, I know I saw people walking down there, so you can be allowed to. But uh, I'm gonna do that, and I'm about probably about six miles away from Depot Bay. Let's do one of these. I don't know how good these are working, but. I'm about six miles away from Depot Bay, and about 18 or 19 miles away from Newport. So I'm figuring I'm gonna hit Depot Bay tomorrow and then take it from there. So even if I somehow feel up to going all the way to Depot Bay, I'm gonna stop myself before that. Cause I already have kind of like a, it's not a blister, but it's just a rubbed spot on my pinky toe. So. Just gotta take it easy because I mean it's only technically the first day in and I don't want to overdo it so I want to make sure that you know I can go the distance here but if I overdo it then that means I'll just have to sit until I feel better but so far so good just got chased down by a wave almost didn't make it <laughs> look at all this foam it's crazy Come back up here again. Wow. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like those foam parties in the 90s. Remember that? try to cross this because <laughs> I'm not going back up to the highway but this little creek this river creek I don't know whatever it is it runs right into the ocean but I think I could just uh, rock hop it over there uh, yeah let me cross this I'll let you know if I die